Welcome back to Spangle Jerps. It's me, Renz, uh, and today we are going to be listening to some music. More specifically, the new Alice Cooper album, Road. Yeah, Alice Cooper has been very consistent with his releases, considering how long the guy's been going. He had an album out in 2000, 2001, 2003, 2005, 2008, 11, 17, 21, and 23. And if you haven't seen the documentary, um, Super Duper Alice Cooper, Honestly, so good. I can't recommend that enough. So we're going to have a listen through. We're going to go through all the tracks uh, and yeah, just see what's going on with this album. First track is I'm Alice. This is one of the singles that came out before this album was released, um, which was I've only heard it a couple of times. I was trying to save myself for the full release. Um, I mean, this is a very classically Alice Cooper, like overproduced uh, opening. It's almost like the meatloaf of shock rock, you know? It already seems like it's gonna be very self-referential. I mean, it's called I'm Alice. It, this song really feels like it was designed to open a live set. I'd love to know who does the guitar work for this, actually. I know, I think he did have Nisa Strauss for a while, but I'm not sure uh, she's still with him. Tell you what, his voice has not changed a whole lot. Oh, okay, <laughs> getting a little spicy there. Oh, he's literally talking about what he does in his own live set. Okay, that's a little bit cringy, maybe? I don't know if the chorus maybe doesn't quite live up to the hype that the verse is setting up. Like, kind of, crazy lyrics aside, because whatever, it's Alice Cooper, he can realistically say what he likes. I like that, uh, the come and be with the me, it's a nice, it flows off the tongue nicely. <laughs> it's quite bleak, though, describing, <laughs> like, I guess, existence as living hell. But... Ah, see, those backing vocals there. Yeah, yeah, we like that. I'm a big fan of, the, like, overlapping lines. Yeah, that was good. That's a, that's a good song. It's a good opener. It's the lyrics. They're this close to the line, you know, for being a bit on the cringy side. Um, but you know what? I'll, I'll buy it. I like it. I like the uh, the sort of self-referential version of that. The song itself is fair. Um, is it harsh to call it generic? It feels like it might be harsh to call it generic, but it's fairly classically rock and roll with a few... Like, I really like the backing vocals. Um, I'm just a sucker for all that kind of stuff. And Alice Cooper's later stuff, um, back in Paranormal, he's gotten quite good with that. So, um, yeah, okay. I'm biting. I'm biting. I like it. I like it. Welcome to the show. Okay. Hmm. Are we about to tap into the same pool with the last song? I'm scary and I sing for you. <laughs> Oh man, only Alice Cooper can get away with writing lyrics where he people call him cool. I know I said the other one sounds like it was designed to go at the beginning of a live set. I'm thinking this one is designed more for that, actually. I'm wondering whether or not he said, Welcome to the show one too many times there, you know? I'm enjoying the bits where he's just, like singing from the perspective of the audience members who are all telling him how great he is. I don't think it would take too long to learn the lyrics to this one. Seeing where this is going, I'm not convinced lyrically about this one, but, uh... And now we're back to saying the same thing a bunch. Hmm. Ah, oh, but the, the backing's... The, it did on the last track, too. The backing's really picking up in this last version of the chorus. There's another guitar line I can hear in the, uh, that's appeared on my left side now. And the backing vocals have gone significantly more present as well. He does build up well, you gotta give him that. Even that chorus didn't seem great the first time, but that last one, it kinda landed. Already shaping up to be a weird album. I can't, I'm not gonna be able to get over, you're so cool, you're all the rage. That is um, somewhat hilarious. <laughs> I hope he doesn't bang this drum for the remaining 11 tracks. Um, let's sing about some other stuff, maybe. Let's uh, move on. All over the world. Oh, for fuck's sake. I can see where this is going. This is like a fictionalized biopic of his life. Brass section, though. Oh. I like the sleazy nature of this one. It's getting my goat a little bit that he's just singing about this sort of, like, cool version of himself. I'm sure... I mean, don't get me wrong. He's a cool dude. Man. They should just rename this uh, album Alice Cooper Sucks His Own Dick. There's that brass, though. Fuck yeah. Rate the brass section a lot. Ooh, and some organ! I dig the song, but that little lead guitar line going in the background is fucking sweet as well. That uh, brass section very much reminding me of um, Welcome to My Nightmare. The way that that brass section is um, like intertwining with the vocal uh, rhythms every now and then is very effective. I like that a lot. 
And there we go. Get the cowbell out. He's starting to get repetitive, not even necessarily with the lyrical content, but the like slow it down thing and then like sort of talk for a bit. Three tracks in a row. <laughs> For fuck's sake, man. That's why you like it and love it. Ah, oh, I gotta have the final. There it is. Um, that was my favorite so far, I think. That was a pretty great song, actually. I feel like I would have liked it even more had it not come before the other two. It seems like they were sort of building up to this one. Uh, and by this point, I'm already a bit sick of him going, I'm great and you think that. The brass section on that was fucking tight. Just, you can't beat a goddamn trumpet, I swear to God. I know I'm I, I'm going to start getting a reputation for just make a trumpet in your song and I'll like it, but it does work. No, that was a really good track. The uh, best one so far, I think. Dead Don't Dance. Uh, okay. Maybe this one will be more about uh, classic Alice Cooper content, zombies and stuff. Heavier start, I like that. I mean, of course, the first thing is about him again, but that's that's fine. I should probably stop bitching about that now. I like that he sings in um, octaves with himself. It's very well mixed. I mean, he's definitely a teetotal person by this point. I'm I'm so I'm so certain of it. I don't think you come back from that level of alcoholism and then like get back to dabbling. See, this one actually reminds me quite a lot of uh, Hollywood Vampires. It's a dirty riff. That's a good lyric. I like that one. They put me in the ground with profound animosity. That's good. <laughs> My beats will be under attack. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, I wasn't expecting a 70 year old ever to refer to their old music as uh, my beats. Doesn't sound right, but fair enough. Ooh, I like that little bass lick there. That was lovely. <laughs> the portal I starts up on the bar. <laughs> Alright, the lyrics are taking a significant go up in the right place. And what is this? Sweet. I don't know who the guitarist is for this. Ryan Rock. Oh, Nisa Strauss is on it. Nice. Oh, there's so many guitarists. Jesus Christ. Look at this. There are so many guitarists credited on this. Fucking. All right, so there's one drummer and one bassist, basically. And the rest of this is just guitarists. But Nisa Strauss is there. I like to see that. I really like that. That was really good. I really like the sleazy vibe. It really reminded me, um, I was trying to put it in my head which one it was. It is the uh, Boogeyman Surprise from uh, Rise, the second Hollywood Vampires album. It really reminds me of that. I'm wondering whether there is some personal crossover on that one too. Moving on to our next track, which is Go Away. Can't say it's not consistent with its tone, this album, despite the amount of guitarists. It's hitting like every classic uh, like rock style. Oh no, I just figured out what the song's about. Alice, man, you're in your 70s. I'm gonna charitably say this is about a stalker rather than just like a girl who likes him. That girl, that poor girl. I really hope this isn't based on a real person. <laughs> this is based on a real person. She's sitting there somewhere feeling really shit right now. <laughs> Good jam though. Kidney stone that won't pass through, Jesus. Alice is going in. Go away. I will say that his lyrics, the um, or the melodies, they're not, they're not adventurous, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. It's definitely making it so that I can sort of predict where those melodies are going, and it's quite cathartic. I can sing along without having to learn it. <laughs> I will say that they have not missed an opportunity for an epic ass guitar solo across this entire thing. I'm very curious how much like moment to moment say Alice has on the actual like minutia of the, the songwriting itself or is that like an Ozzy Osbourne case where they get four people to write an album for him and then just comes and sings over it does that wheel him out from his cupboard probably not I don't think so but there's those fucking backing vocals and actually that um, is very Dandy Warhols please he says oh dear well, that song definitely put a smile on my face. I mean, it's it's very consistently kind of classic Rocky, but so far the songs stylistically have been distinct enough. I actually think they're getting better. The f I I'm Alice is, I can see why it was the single, because it's like the, hey, welcome to my new album kind of thing. But I actually think it might be the worst track on the album so far. Let's move on to White Line Frankenstein. Can't have an Alice Cooper album without the word Frankenstein in there somewhere. Whoa. Okay, kicking it off with a slightly heavier one. I like that. This is definitely... I never really think of Alice Cooper as moshable. There are some moshable tracks on this album. 
<laughs> Got a load of Mondays. Do we think he has a cold? Or is he rammed full of cocaine, I wonder? I love this, like, fictionalized version of him that he's living where he's, like, not a family man. Oh. Hell yeah. This is, a... this is the first properly good chorus to come through, I think, so far. Oh, he's a jiggler. Okay. You raunchy, raunchy man. Someone's been giving him the little injections that means he can get hard on again, and he's gone straight to the studio to write. They call me Wildlife Frankenstein. That's a hell of a drop for the chorus, though. Oh, guitar shredding. Is it me? Or does not every single one of these songs need a, like, epic 40 second to a minute long guitar solo? Ooh, and then the little twangy bit in the background. I tell you what, this is why there's so many fucking um, electric guitarists credited on this album. There's like five or six lines going on simultaneously the whole way through. It's a very thick sound. Rock and Rolling Stones also a fucking great line as well. Oh, Tom Morello. No wonder I like it. Fucking Tom Morello's on that one. Sick. It does sound a bit um, Rage Against the Machine-y now you think about it. Yeah, this album, they did not pick their track order well. I mean, I get it from like a lyrical thematic point of view but um they didn't start with the best tracks by far that white line frankenstein may be my favorite again even though i did also really like dead don't dance go away it just was funny um <laughs> moving on to track number seven big boots goddamn cowbell you're so effective can't get away from a stabbing piano line too god it's got all the tropes Ooh, and that bass line scorched my face off. Oh, I really like that. And the backing vocal straight in. Oh, man, the, every, everything, it's all coming together. We all know you mean tits, Alice. For fuck's sake. But that piano line is so goddamn effective. I'm getting Jane, Steph Jefferson Starship vibes from that. Those backing vocals are very effective, too. Because every woman on the planet wants to fuck Alice Cooper. Where does he get this shit from? And here we go, signature guitar solo. But you know what she's got? Big boots. I will say, I think there's a symptom of some of the other songs on this album as well. He really relies on repeating those choruses, like, a lot. He's expecting us to know the chorus lyrics by the time we go to see him live. Girl, for f <laughs> it's not subtle, is it? Oh, dear. You know what they say about people with big boots? They want to fuck Alice Cooper, that's what I heard. Man, he is a horny boy. It's a good song. Again, it's like, God, it would be cringy. All of it would be cringy if it was anyone else doing it. But it's Alice Cooper and he's just kind of earned being cringy, you know? And he's just filling every single old classic rock cliche. But they're being executed with style. So far, I'm really digging it. We'll see how long the appeal of this lasts. Moving on to the next one, Rules of the Road. Okay, back to driving. Ooh, got your click on. Hey. I like the rock and roll shock and lose control. That's, that's a good little uh, refrain. Back to the, like, pseudo-talking thing again. I'm getting Welcome to the Show and I'm Alice vibes from the way that that chorus kind of comes out. It just, I, I don't know. It feels a little anticlimactic. It feels almost like that's the B section, like the pre-chorus, but it never quite pays off. I do like the guitar line in the background, but the vocal line could do something different. Maybe a little more variation in the chords. I mean, backing vocals, still absolutely on point. Yeah, he's he just he said this line too many times. It, the, these are the rules of the road has occurred too many times. Um, yeah, that one was all right. I think that one was, I think that one was all right. It's, ah, I, I don't know. These these are the ones that make me feel like it's getting a bit samey. Some of the uh, like standout ones in between, not so. But what well, that was track eight of thirteen. So we're luckily that none of them are very long. Actually, looking at it now, like none of them. What one track crosses four minutes, which is uh, good for the TikTok generation, I guess. Um, let's move on to the big goodbye. Our next track. This is a pretty heavy riff, actually. This is kind of ghost reminiscent, actually. Ooh, ooh, double kick drum. He don't give a damn. How long till he sings about fuck it again? It's gonna happen, right? This riff is banging. The drums are really on point for this too. Whoop. Man, it, literally, add some organ to this and have Tobias Forge sing. This could be a go song, if you ask me. 
such a classic Cooper harmony there as well. Uh, it's like a fourth, I think, unless I'm full of shit, which is possible. Ooh, okay, I know I've been saying that there are too many guitar solos, but I know what it is about this one I like so much. Maybe it's just the tone. Also, the chord sequence underneath is really interesting. And there's the final chorus repeats. Fucking beefed up backing vocals. Man. I mean, I guess if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But uh, I'm feeling uh, deja vu a little. Fuck, you know what this reminds me of a little bit, actually, with these vocals? It reminds me a bit of Lordy. Some of the newer stuff. Not a bad thing. I love Lordy. Okay, return to form. Every time I feel like I'm going to get a little bit disappointed with this album for being repetitive, it just drops another absolute cracker. I'm saving that too. Um, it, I feel like so far, and I'm, it might change having listened to slightly more of this album, well, when we get to the end, I guess, but it does feel a little bit like you could trim out like maybe 30% of this album, make it like a nine tracker or an eight tracker instead, and it'd be like really, really tight. But we'll see, we'll see. He's got time yet. Right, track number 10, Road Rats Forever. Uh, this is going to be another one where he's just like, driving on the road and doing drugs. Do like a dueling guitar line thing though, that's nice. There's that fucking cowbell again! Oh! I get it, it's about roadies. I will say, this song has already been done, it's called Roadie by Tenacious D and it will never be topped. <laughs> we do a thousand! Man, if he's not singing about his own dick, he's singing about someone else's dick. Back to that kind of rock up arenas. I like it. I mean, I guess as soon as you include a piano in a song like this, it's just gonna. I like it. Even though, oh fucking hell man, too much guitar solo I will say. They're all quite good individually. I mean that solo was quite good, they're all quite good, it's just a bit much, you know? I still think this is another song with a, where the verses are stronger than the chorus actually. I mean, this bit's good. The only thing it's missing is more trumpet. No, okay, I quite like that one, I think it's on the upper side of the middle for me? It's like... Not as good as the absolute highlights of this album. I'm Lyrically, it's fine. Like I said, it's been done better. Actually, not very lyrically dense thing, looking at it now. Fucking hell, for a four minute song, there's like no words in this, considering fucking half of it is Road Rats on the Road to Our Final Breath. Oh well. Uh, oh, we're getting near the end now. I wonder if we'll do a ballad anytime soon. I've just seen the name for the next one as Baby Please Don't Go. So I'm wondering whether or not that is going to be the like slower, lighters out in the air, air kind of song. Ah, I fucking knew it! I swear to God I didn't know that before. It's just called Baby Please Don't Go. It was long overdue an acoustic song. And to be fair, Alice Cooper actually does some of his slower acoustic ones really well. Only Women Bleed is actually one of my favourite of his tracks, so... Oh no, I thought it was... Fuck's sake, man, he can't take a loss ever, can he? This motherfucker, literally, I thought when he said Baby Please Don't Go, it'd be him singing to a woman who was leaving him. Nope, it's the other way around, bitch. Every single woman wants him, and he's just got... He's just not got enough dick to go around, you know? Fuck's sake, man. It's quite good, I like the song, actually. He's gotta be one of the fucking masters of backing vocals. I know I've said this ad nauseum, I'm probably gonna have to edit out several of the times where I mention backing vocals, because it's gonna get boring for you listening, but... They're so good. They're just consistently fantastic. Every track, you can't deny that. Yeah, I like this a lot. It, the album sorely needed this. Well, I laughed, but it's all quite funny. But I do actually quite like that song. I, I'm, I feel like maybe it could have come a little earlier in the album to break up some of the more samey stuff. Good, I'm not gonna lie. It's probably not one of those ones I'll just like slap on when I'm feeling in the mood for Alice Cooper, but um, in the context of the album, that was really good, and I actually think I might try and line that up as an acoustic cover, because that seems like it will do well. A Hundred More Miles is our next song. Quite like the starting of this, it's um, more sinister. Are you only going to put the slow ones at the very end? Is the, la the last three is it just takes a depressing downturn. Because if you ask me, that's bad album structuring. Oh no, is he just like singing about being really old now? Now I'm getting um, Ordinary Man, Ozzy... Um, Vibe. <laughs> now I'm getting Ordinary Man Aussie vibes. Uh, it's also a great song. Quite uh, introspective. And lyrically it's like... Quite sad actually. I mean he's like... A very spry 75 year old. But still. I mean his knees can't be what they used to be right? He runs around a lot. I mean there's also absolutely no shot he's on his own. I, from what I understand he's either being a loving father or husband or playing golf most of the time. Whilst with Ozzy I really buy that his fucking body's breaking down and he's like mentally more scrambled than he ever used to be. Alice like managed to kick his drug and alcohol issues comparatively young. I like that song. It's, it's 
I would find it more depressing if I didn't know that Alice Cooper's like doing all right. You know, he's not sad and lonely, stuck in a fucking pool of misery with no one else to help him, kind of thing. Like, I think he's living it up fairly nicely at this point. But uh, I like the song. I like the uh, more creepy vibe. The chord sequence is more interesting than quite a lot of those. It's just more variety, which is what this album sorely needs. On to the last one. If this is also a slower song, a more ballady one. I mean, you've got to imagine that the final choice for the album order would have been Alice's, but I don't think it was a good... Like, he should have spread these out, but we'll see, we'll see. We'll give him a uh, benefit of the doubt on the last one. Maybe it'll also be a massive metal fest. This is a bit clutchy, actually. Um, ooh, yeah, it's a hip, hip shaker. Woo! Oh, this... Oh, for fuck's sake, okay, fine. <laughs> I was wondering how much this is going to be like Magic Bus. It turns out it's really like Magic Bus. Okay. That's fine. It's the inclusion of that acoustic again. They just like only remember they had an acoustic guitar in the studio like three tracks before the end. It's so weird, man. It's a love letter to classic rock, this whole thing. The gang vocals from that is coming in real, uh, real clutch as well. I like that a lot. Oh, okay. Ah, a little drum solo, I see. They really are just gonna give him like a minute long drum outro. Ah, okay, there we go, fine. Sick. It kind of paid off. Well, that was pretty enjoyable, actually. That whole album was pretty fucking good. And you know what? I think my earlier comment when I said something along the lines of clip out like kind of 30% of it and it would be like a really good album stands. I think you could probably... This is going to sound harsh. I think you could take out I'm Alice. I think you could take out Welcome to the Show. Just take out like some of the ones that are like really generic-y. And with, like, the choruses don't pay off as well. The lyrics are a bit cringy. They're a bit too self-referential. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it's extremely funny that the entire way through, Alice is singing like he's this, like, current sex icon. I'm sure, I mean, man did a photo shoot, a nakedy photo shoot with Salvador Dali at one point in his career. So, you know, he was a sex icon, but it's just funny that he's still singing like he's one now. Um, even though I think it's definitely been a while uh but the good tracks are absolutely banging all over the world's pretty great i really enjoyed white light frankenstein tom morello really i mean he injected his like kind of more frenetic energy into it, which i really liked big boots is just hilarious it's a fun fun track it's got good cowbellage and stuff but uh it's just fucking funny man the way he sings about big boots well, the way he sings about all of it is just funny only he could get away with that. And uh, Big Goodbye was really good as well. And I actually really liked this, the later part of the album as well. Baby Please Don't Go was hilarious for lyrical reasons. Again, as they all seem to be. But um, actually quite a good ballad thing. 100 More Miles was pretty good as well. And Magic Bus I actually quite enjoyed. No, but you know what? That whole album was really good. I would recommend it. I don't believe that anything should be rated a 10 out of 10. Because perfection does not exist. I'm, I'm one of those annoying twats who thinks that. So it can't be a 10. It's not a nine. Might be an eight. No, I don't think I'm leaving myself enough headroom because there are definitely better albums. The, ho the whole thing was... I mean, it's unoriginal is unfair, again. It's it's just like a big homage to an entire genre, really. But there's not quite enough variety. 7.5, I think. But there are some standout tracks on there that are like nines, easy. Yeah, well, you know what? Fucking good for you, Alice Cooper. It's uh, really nice to see you just continuing to just... just produce music just you're like damon album of shock rock like tobias took forge takes up like four years in between his albums you've been doing this since the 60s and you're still doing it very consistently so you know hats off to alice cooper 7.5 sounds low but I did, it's a really good album i would recommend well thank you for watching i'm trying out new formats with everything so i don't know whether or not this is a thing you'd like me talking to a camera and listening to some music together um i might think about bringing back some sort of talking tunes news type majig we'll see uh, so yeah, let me know in the comments below what you thought. What do you think about this Alice Cooper album? Am I a twat and it's amazing? Or was I being far too lenient because it's bloody Alice Cooper? Let me know. Like, share, subscribe, all of that kind of stuff. And I will see you very bloody soon.